I'm Rachel Hernandez, real estate investor turned mobile home investor and best-selling author. I make a living investing in mobile homes for cash flow for long-term passive income. After many mistakes and lessons learned, I've been able to create the kind of life where I can do the types of things I want to do, not have to do. I created the Adventures in Mobile Homes podcast to share with you what I've learned so you can spend more time with family, friends, and do things you love. Mobile home investing can help you get there. If you want to hear real stories with practical and actionable advice you can use from someone who's been in the trenches and who's still investing today to create the type of life you love, then you're in the right place. Let's get started. Well, hello, and welcome to the Adventures in Mobile Homes podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Hernandez, a.k.a. Mobile Home Girl of AdventuresinMobileHomes.com. Thank you so much for joining me here on the 24th episode of the podcast. Now, just in case you missed it, be sure to tune in to the last episode where I go over how to wholesale mobile homes and the steps you can take to build up cash to do it as a mobile home investor. You can find it along with the show notes at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash 23. And that is the number 23. Okay, so let's get started. So last week, I talked about the different ways you can build up cash through wholesaling or bird dogging by finding deals for other investors if you're just getting started as a mobile home investor. Again, building up cash on the side is something you do if you're not financially ready to start buying mobile homes for cash flow right now. By taking the time to look for deals for other investors and getting paid for your time, you'll gain the experience and the confidence to go out and do deals on your own when you're ready. But today, I want to get back to it and talk about something that I get asked a lot. So I figured doing an entire podcast episode about the subject would help. And that is how to determine mobile home repairs. Because I guess a lot of you out there are wondering how to figure out what repairs are needed and how much they're going to cost when going out to look at mobile homes and meet with sellers. So today, I'm going to dive in and talk about how to figure out repair costs for the mobile homes you look at for this podcast episode. But before we move on, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Hey there, Rachel here. Are you interested in mobile home investing? If yes, I've got a free mobile home investing course for you. It's called what you need to know to get started in mobile home investing. It details all the ins and outs of what you need to know before you get started as a mobile home investor. With so much information out there, it's overwhelming to go out and search for what you're looking for. So I put my knowledge and expertise in mobile home investing to work. And it's all in this free training course. You can find it at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash free training class. Again, www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash free training class. Grab your seat and get started today. Now, back to the show. Okay, first things first. 
Before I go into talking about figuring out repair costs on mobile homes, you really need to know your market first. As mentioned in prior episodes, it's important to go out and take the time to learn your market. Only do business in areas and neighborhoods that you feel comfortable with. These are neighborhoods that work with your personality and attract the type of clientele that you feel comfortable working with. I cannot stress this enough. Now, just in case you missed it, you may want to listen to episode five of this podcast, where I talk about how to learn your market and the importance of learning your market as a mobile home investor, which I'll link up here in the show notes. Getting back to it, once you figure out what neighborhoods you feel comfortable in and you're ready to start meeting with sellers, then you'll want to follow my advice as mentioned in episode 18 working with mobile home sellers. Here, I go over the steps you can take when you actually meet sellers and some of the things to look out for, as well as a negotiation process. Again, if you missed that episode, I'll be sure to link it up here in the show notes. Okay, so you're with the seller and you're going through the home inspecting it, as you regularly do. So what are the most common items to look out for when you're going through these homes? And how do you figure out the repair costs on these items? Good question. Well, let's start with the basics. The first thing you want to determine And you need to know this going in before you even set up the appointment with the seller is how much work do you exactly want to do? Can you take on a full rehab or something with just cosmetic work like paint and carpet, remove and replace? Or do you want a home in pristine condition where all the work has been done for you? And you'll want to buy it like that in moving condition. Or do you not want to do any type of work at all and just want to sell it as is? Depending on your investment style as a mobile home investor, This will determine how much you put into these homes for repairs and the costs it will take to fix them up. If you're going to do some work to the home, will you be doing all of the work yourself? How handy are you? Or will you be hiring it out? If so, How much will you hire out? And how much will you do yourself? As a side note, it's really hard to do everything, even if you are handy. I wouldn't recommend doing everything on the home, especially in areas where it requires a certain trade and or skill. I'm talking about any type of electrical work, roof work, heating and air conditioning work, etc. Plumbing, you may be able to do some work on it if you're willing to learn and or you have some background in it. And you can definitely do things like remove and replace, paint and install carpet, if you're up for the challenge. So it will really depend on you and how much work 
you want to do. Now, in the beginning, I understand money can be tight and resources can be low. I hear you. I had to do a lot of work myself when I first got started in mobile home investing, which was over a decade ago. I remember those days. It took longer to fix up homes, doing a lot of the work myself. But I learned a lot. And by doing some of the work yourself, it will help you to know how things are done the right way, which will help when you're ready to hire some work out after you've saved up some money and done some deals. This is what I did as my mobile home investing business grew. So realize there are things that you can do and things that you can't do when fixing up and repairing mobile homes. Now, if you're on the other side of the spectrum where you don't want to do any repairs to the homes and just want to sell them as is, well, you can go that route as well. This is what Lonnie Scruggs, my personal mentor, and the godfather of mobile home investing did. He either did minor work or little work to the mobile homes that he bought and sold, which he marketed as handyman specials. This means he was selling to end buyers, whether they be homeowners or other investors, who were willing to put in the time and the money to do the fix-up work themselves. Now, one of my other mentors also followed Lonnie's footsteps. As she once told me, Rachel, I don't even pick up a paintbrush. She would sell all the homes that she bought without doing any work to them, just like Lonnie. She really didn't like doing any type of fix-up work or marketing, for that matter. Which I'll talk about in another episode down the road. But I will warn you, if you go this route of buying homes and not fixing them up and selling or renting them as is, well, you'll attract a different type of clientele. It could be a quote-unquote rougher crowd who approach you and are interested in your homes. Now, since these people are willing to fix up the homes themselves, they probably will try to negotiate you down on price. So if you're going this route, have a target price in mind knowing there are issues to be taken care of, things needing fixing up, and price it a little higher than your target price, but not too high, so you can have some negotiating room. Now, I won't get into negotiating in this episode because there's a lot to know, and this subject will have to have its own dedicated podcast episode, but I'll be sure to cover it in another episode down the road. So stay tuned. In any case, so the first thing you need to do is figure out exactly how much work you want to do and if you're going to do the work yourself or hire it out to contractors. And just in case you missed it, I talk more about how to find and work with contractors in episode 16 of this podcast, which I'll link up here in the show notes if you'd like to check it out. 
Once you decide, you'll have a better idea of the route you should take to figure out repairs when going out and evaluating mobile homes and meeting with sellers. So what are some of the major items to look out for when evaluating repairs for mobile homes? Well, we've got two areas to cover, the inside and the outside. Let's start with the inside first. And by the way, when I meet with sellers, I usually do start with the inside when I go and inspect homes. After I inspect the inside, then we move to the outside, which makes for a smooth transition afterwards when I'm ready to leave. Getting back to it, as far as the inside of mobile homes, there are a couple key things to look out for when you're inspecting them and figuring out the repairs. The first thing you want to look out for is the floor. Are there any soft spots in the floor? Feel around for them and take note of them as you tour these homes. As a side note, many of the older mobile homes have particle board subfloor, which is the flooring underneath, what you see, whether it be carpet, sheet vinyl, or planks. Unfortunately, that's not the best material when it comes to using it for flooring. Once these areas get wet and water seeps inside, with particle board, it soaks the water up like a sponge, causing damage, and all of the pieces of wood glued or stuck together to crumble and fall apart. Now, I'm not saying particle board is bad. There are situations where you can use this type of wood, usually with low traffic areas or areas where you're less likely to spill water on it. Though, as a flooring material, it's not very good to use. So when you're going through these homes, you'll need to count the areas where the subfloor and the soft spots are. In order to fix these areas, you'll need to cut the bad areas out and replace with new wood, usually plywood. Now, this is where having a good carpenter or handyman on your team comes in. If you'd like to read more about working with contractors, you may want to check out my book, Real Estate Investing Sucks, How to Find, Hire, and Manage Contractors the Right Way, which I'll link up here in the show notes. Other than the subfloor, then you need to look at the flooring above. In mobile homes, you'll usually find carpet, sheet vinyl, and if it's a newer home, you may find the laminate planks, you know, the ones that emulate wood flooring. If the floor above the subfloor needs to be replaced, usually if the carpet is over five years old and the sheet vinyl looks pretty dated, then you'll have to figure in the cost to do the replacement, both labor and materials. Again, this is where you have to know whether you'll be doing the work yourself or hiring it out. If you decide to do the work yourself, you'll have to get measurements and get the cost for the materials. And don't forget to add in your time because your time is worth money. Though, if you plan to hire the work out, then it's just a matter of getting estimates from a few good contractors 
who are familiar with mobile homes and can remove and replace the flooring with new flooring and decent looking material. Moving on, plumbing is another major issue when it comes to inspecting mobile homes. Now, the older mobile homes had plumbing pipes made of polybutylene or gray pipe, which wasn't so good. After a while, the material would crumble and cause leaks for a lot of mobile homes. It got so bad that the entire mobile home industry stopped using the material because of these issues. I wrote an article about gray pipe, which I'll link up here in the show notes if you'd like to learn more. So when you're in areas where there is plumbing, such as the kitchen and the bathrooms, be sure to test the water, making sure there are no leaks underneath. If you see a bucket or a bowl underneath the sink, or even moisture from water or water damage to the wood for that matter, then there are plumbing issues in that area. As you test, be sure to take note of any areas where the plumbing is not good and water is leaking. Ask the seller about it and try to find out how long these issues have been going on. This is going to be another cost you'll have to add into your repairs. Now, usually I hire out this work and have a dedicated plumber I work with to fix any plumbing repairs. I will tell you, this is a constant area where you'll be doing repairs and fix up. So if you don't have a background in plumbing or you don't think you could do the work for any plumbing issues that come up, then it's best to hire this type of work out. It will save you time and money in the end, as long as you are diligent about who you hire and make sure they can do the job in a timely manner for a fair price. Now, if you need help in this area, I do offer mentoring to those who need it. And I'll put a link with info in the show notes if you'd like to learn more. Along the lines of plumbing, when you're testing out all the plumbing fixtures, including the sinks, tubs, showers, and toilets, be sure to make sure that you're getting both hot and cold water. If you're not getting hot water, that means the water heater is not working and has failed. Now, this is another expense I find usually with older mobile homes. To give you an idea, usually water heaters last for at least six years, depending on the type you get, but definitely under 10 years. If the home you're inspecting has not had its water heater serviced or replaced, be sure to count this as an expense when you're figuring out repairs. Ask the seller when the last time the hot water heater was replaced and how old it is. It's a good idea to ask this even if the hot water is working. This way, it'll give you an idea of how much life is left in the unit. Again, figure out the cost by thinking if you'll be doing it, which I don't recommend, or hiring it out, usually to a licensed plumber who can do the job properly. Apart from plumbing, it's important to check the mechanical systems 
in the home as well. This includes the heating and air conditioning. All of the homes I buy usually have central heating and air conditioning. And over the years, I've had to replace units for both, which can be costly. So when you're out inspecting mobile homes to buy, be sure to test out both the heating and air conditioning. Make sure they work. Try it at different settings and all different levels. Ask the seller how old the unit is and what type of maintenance they perform on it, if any. If the unit is old, say 10 years and older, then it's best to account for replacing the heating and air conditioning at some point in the future. To give you peace of mind, you could also get the opinion of a few licensed heating and air conditioning contractors to get their thoughts and opinions, including when they think you should replace the unit. Now, I'll be honest, this is a big expense. So account for it going in if the unit is old and it looks like it could be going bad. Sure, you can get away with repairing and replacing a part here and there, but there will be a point where the unit will need to be replaced entirely. Okay, those are the big items to look out for while inside of a mobile home. Yes, there are smaller items like painting and replacing trim, but those are minor compared to what I've mentioned already. For purposes of this podcast, I'm only going to talk about the large cost items. As for the outside, one of the major things you want to get checked is the roof. Now, while you're on the inside, notice the ceiling in the home. See if there are any water spots or rings in any of the rooms. This is very important as it can indicate a roof leak. Also, while you're in the home, look at all of the window sills. Make sure there is no moisture or water in those areas getting into the house. This is a typical area for water to come in. The windows need to be sealed regularly from the outside and the inside to keep any type of moisture debris, and even insects like ants from coming into the home. And yes, this has happened to me in the past. A whole colony of ants coming into the home due to the home needing to be sealed again. But alas, this is a topic for another episode down the road. As for the roof, it's best to have it thoroughly inspected. This is not an area you want to skimp on. Now, I won't go into the types of roofs and the options to replace and repair them in this episode, but I can talk about it in the future if it's something that you're interested in. Most times, you can have a roofer take a look at the roof while the owner isn't home. This is definitely a negotiating point when you're ready to buy the home and the seller is willing to work with you. Don't skip the step of having a professional look at the roof if you suspect any type of roof issues. Again, ask the seller how old the roof is and if they've had any issues with the roof, such as leaks in the past. This will give you an indication of what may happen in the future and the life of the roof. 
other than the roof, you also want to look at the siding. Does the siding look okay? If the siding is hardy board siding, are there any soft spots? Where are they? Does it look like water is getting into the home? From where? And what needs to be done? Now, hardy board siding requires constant maintenance. Due to it being made out of wood and the design of mobile homes, usually water falls along the siding as there's not much room for professional grade gutters like the ones on single family homes. So this becomes a constant issue. It just needs proper maintenance like anything. If you see or feel any soft spots in the siding, take note of it. You'll have to get a handyman contractor to look at it if you plan to hire the work out, which will give you an idea of the repair costs. And if you plan to do the work yourself, you'll have to account for your time and the cost of materials to do the job. Be sure to take measurements while you're there, if you decide to go that route. Lastly, you'll also want to look at the skirting. Is it falling apart? Are there any holes or rips in certain areas? If there are, you'll have to either replace or repair the skirting in those areas. I can tell you, as for skirting, it's going to be a constant issue. If the skirting is vinyl, over time, it will wear away from weather issues and also when the grass is cut. Whether someone does the landscaping for you or you do it yourself, most times it's very hard to cut grass and not hit the skirting when using a lawnmower or weed whacker, which is the norm. An alternative is to look into another solution when it comes to your skirting needs. Though using higher quality materials means more cost when you're fixing up homes, but less maintenance, hopefully, over time. It's really a toss-up. In my case, most of the time, I just stick to the regular vinyl skirting as that's what's accepted and the parks I work in require it. So it's just something to think about. What you do depends on your individual situation, your budget needs, and your goals. If there are any holes in the skirting or large openings, then you want to take care of them as soon as possible. Leaving the skirting open invites animals who may want to make your home their home. And that isn't a good thing. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So there you have it. My take on how to figure out repairs and what major items to look out for when you're out looking and inspecting mobile homes when you're just getting started as a mobile home investor. Again, what you spend on repairs and maintenance will come down to exactly how involved you personally want to be in the fix-up work process. Do you want to do the work yourself or are you looking to hire the work out? If you plan to do any type of work yourself, what exactly will you do? And what type of work will you hire out? Or will you do all of the work on the mobile homes, which I typically don't recommend? Remember. No one can know and do everything. There will be items beyond your knowledge and skills that you may want to hire out. 
those specifically that require a license to perform the work is what I'm talking about, such as electrical work and heating and air conditioning work. Don't get into a job if you feel uncomfortable and don't have the knowledge or the skills to do it. You could make the situation worse and damage the home or hurt yourself, which isn't a good thing. When it comes to fix-up work, know your limitations. Decide first on how involved you're going to be in this area of the business. Then it'll make things easier when you go out and try to figure out repairs. Since you already know what you're going to do and what you're going to hire out, you'll know when you need to go out and get estimates from other contractors, usually three for each project and job, and when you can determine the cost of materials and how to figure in the labor if you're going to do the work yourself. This way, you won't get hung up on how much something is going to cost because you'll already know going in if you'll be doing the work or hiring it out. Then it's just a matter of asking contractors to come by and take a look and collect estimates. It's as simple as that. So what did you think? Did this episode help you? As a mobile home investor? I hope so. If you've enjoyed the show and find value with it, please consider supporting the show. I've enjoyed this podcasting journey so far, and it's something that I've always wanted to do. I'll include a link in the show notes on how you can support me if you'd like to check it out. For more information on this episode, Check out the show notes where I link up some of the resources mentioned here. You can find it at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash 24. And that is the number 24. Again, www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash 24. And if you enjoyed this episode please be sure to share it with family and friends and be sure to subscribe. If you have some time, I'd love to hear your feedback through a short Apple podcast review. Until next time, this is Rachel Hernandez, AKA mobile home girl of the adventures in mobile homes podcast, signing off. Thanks for tuning in.